All right, tonight we want to focus on Florida's sixth district vacated by Republican Ron DeSantis, now the GOP nominee for governor in Florida. Democrat Nancy Soderberg is a former Clinton administration official. She's facing Mike Waltz, a former Green Beret commander. They are both with us tonight, though back to back, declining the invitation to debate directly. So first up, Soderberg, like Waltz, touting her national security experience. Welcome to Fox News at night. Great to have you. Thank you very much. So let's talk about some foreign policy hotspots because both you and Mike have a background in the national security apparatus. Can we talk about China and Russia, the fact that they're teaming up for uh, enormous war games, the fact that China is pushing back on the U.S. on a number of issues from tariffs to North Korea. What do you make of our relationship with them? Well, as a national security official, I've uh, sat next to the Russians and the Chinese in the U.N. Security Council. and. They're both uh, adversaries and ones that we need to stand up to. Uh, first and foremost, Russia, which is becoming an increasing regional threat there. And China's increasingly a competitor, taking over the South China Sea islands. And we need a strong Congress to stand up to them and make sure that America's interests are, are protected there. And in Congress, I'll do just that. What about North Korea? I mean, it's something that has uh, plagued administration after administration after administration, not really finding a resolution as they continue to ramp up their nuclear program. Uh, now indications, despite the Singapore summit and the glad handing and shaking of hands and happiness, uh, that it appears by just about every account, they're not slowing down their program. Uh, and the fact that they're getting help with a break from their sanctions with places allegedly like China and Russia, what do you make of that? Uh, North Korea is one of the most frustrating problems that any president faces. I was in the White House as deputy national security advisor during the deals in the 90s. They make a deal and then cheat. They make a deal and then cheat, and um, they cannot be trusted. So in, in their case, you have to not trust and verify any agreement. So far, they have not fulfilled any commitment that they've made to the president. Their nuclear programs continue, so they're a big threat. We need to keep tough on them, keep sanctions on, and make sure that we do not face a nuclear-armed North Korea with the ballistic missiles to reach our country. It's interesting because we're going to talk to Mike next, but I feel like your first two answers would be the same thing that he would say. I mean, are, are you a bit hawkish for a Democrat, would you say, on these national, uh, or excuse me, foreign policy issues? Or how would you describe yourself when it comes to matters of defense and foreign policy? Look, I've spent my life defending our values for keeping this country safe, and I'll do that in Congress. I believe that we need to make sure that America's interests are protected against our enemies. We have a strong military, but we have a country that's true to our values as well, and that's the kind of uh, leader I will be in Congress. There is, as you know, a lot of disagreement within the Democrat Party uh, about how far left various candidates across the spectrum are willing to go when it comes to things like abolishing ICE and impeaching the president. Uh, I want to read you something from a uh, Democrat nominee in Illinois 6th District, Sean Caston saying Trump and Osama bin Laden have a tremendous amount in common because they both figure out how to use the bully pulpit to activate marginalized young men. You were part of a team that advised going after bin Laden years and years ago. What do you make, is it appropriate to you, uh, to have an equivocation between our current president and Osama bin Laden? I do not. Um, look, I was one of the first in the White House in the early days when Osama bin Laden was coming up to say, let's get this guy, make sure that we get him as a threat and to keep this country safe. I brought the Irish Catholics and Protestants together to try and bring warring parties together. And that's the kind of member of Congress I'll be, to make sure that we defend America's interests and make sure that we defend the United States at every step. That means keeping our values here at home as well, making sure that we have good health care and jobs that you can raise a family on. And that's the okay. kind of relationship that we need with the American people in Congress. Super quick lightning round. Are you for abolishing ICE? Uh, look, I've defended our borders as a national security official, defended our Constitution. And we need to make sure that we keep this country safe, but in a way that doesn't rip kids across uh, from their but families abolishing and the separate agency. families. The, the, we need to reform ICE and make sure that it protects our, our, our country, goes after the drug dealers and the criminals okay. in our country. So and impeachment. We need to reform it, but we do not need to abolish it. Impeachment, yes or no? I'm sorry? Impeachment? Uh, impeachment is a very serious problem. Uh, it's one that I would take seriously in Congress. I believe that it's one of the most serious issues that one would take up in Congress. and I. 
would absolutely wait for until we see the facts okay. from the Mueller investigation and see whether the facts that the, are in that report would justify such a serious decision. But I'll wait for the facts. Okay. Nancy Soderberg, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, now to the other side. President Trump's disapproval rating is at an all-time high, at least according to a new Washington Post ABC poll. 60% of Americans say they disapprove of the president's job performance. And from the same poll, nearly half of Americans, 49%, say he should be impeached. Uh, and that could lead to Trump being removed from office, while 46% say Congress should actually not move forward with impeachment. All right, keeping our focus on Florida's 6th Congressional District, former Green Beret Commander Mike Waltz is here. Uh, he says he would welcome a campaign rally with the president. Welcome, Mike. Good hey. to see you. Okay, I have to say that the president tweeted just a short time ago uh, about that poll. He said, ABC Washington Post poll was by far the least accurate one two weeks out from the 2016 election. I call it a suppression poll, but by election day, they brought us out of shame to about even. They will never learn. What do you make of this latest polling? You know, Shannon, my team and I knocked tens of thousands of doors across North Florida. And let me tell you, there are people, Republicans there, may not like sometimes the president's demeanor or what he says, but they love what he's doing. And what's not to like? I mean, the economy is booming. We're standing up to our adversaries. We're holding our allies accountable. Tax reform, deregulation, their lives are better. And while, you know, Washington is so focused on things like Amoroso or, or the rhetoric of the day. They're focused on their lives, and under President Trump and his leadership, their lives are better. They're seeing relatives hired. They're seeing their 401k boom. Uh, so you know, they want this really. You know, this midterm is a choice about which America do we want? Do we want to move this economy and move America forward? Or I get, you know, I hear my my opponent Nancy Soderberg say what she's for or against. But as a junior member under Nancy Pelosi, she's going to be voting to impeach the president. She's going to be voting to repeal the tax cut. She's going to be voting to move us towards socialism and towards open borders and abolishing okay. ICE. The Dems are clear where they want to go. Let me read you something out of Politico. The headline was Trump scandal fallout hangs over midterms. They say several Republican consultants express fear that the weight and severity of the legal cases against Trump's former campaign manager manager and personal attorney, coupled with the constant drumbeat of negative stories and scandals, had the potential to turn off key constituencies, especially suburban women, and threaten to curb overall GOP voter enthusiasm in the fall. I mean, um, that, those suburban moms are people that you need. Yeah, but again, let's look at let's just look at the turnout in the primary. In my district alone, in District Six, we had 77,000 Republicans turnout compared to 58,000 Democrats. When you have roughly the same in terms of registration, 30 percent compared to 25 percent. So this notion of a blue wave and you know it's more like a blue ripple. Uh, Will and they come really back in the fall? We really didn't see. Absolutely, they're going to come back. They're fired up about Rick Scott against Nelson. They're fired up about Ron DeSantis. They're fired up about this choice of which way America is going to go. Are we going to continue with conservative values, defending our country, standing up to allies, securing our border, booming our economy, or are we going to move backwards to the era of Obama and Clinton? So let's That's talk, the choice. You know that turnout is going to be everything in mm -hmm. these midterms. So let's talk a little bit about the enthusiasm gap, because we've had a lot of polling on this recently. Right. From Fox, this is what we have um, just within the last couple of weeks. With Election Day just over two months away, more 2016 Hillary Clinton voters, that's how they identify themselves, either Clinton or Trump voters, are, quote, extremely interested in the midterms than the Trump voters. It's 58 to 48 right. percent. They're also more enthusiastic about casting a ballot, 51 to 37 percent, and more certain they will show up and vote, 76 to 67 percent. How do you close that gap? Look, I'm telling you, in Florida, we're not seeing it. I have hundreds of thousands of doors that we've knocked on, and their lives are moving forward. Their lives are moving better. Uh, uh, they're moving in the right direction. There was a, there a great reaction. One of the things that they're really focused on is getting more combat veterans mm -hmm. in Congress. Like yourself? Uh, like myself. I've been endorsed by a national organization called With Honor that is supporting both sides, bipartisan, to get more combat vets because they know that in the foxhole, nobody cares about race, religion, economic background, even party. It's about mission. It's about America. And that's the ethos that we want to bring, and that's the ethos that we're going to bring to move this country forward. I can disagree with Democrats all day long, but if they've served, if we have that commonality of putting our lives on the line for this country, we can have a beer at night and move the country forward. And, you know, listen, Shannon, this stat really moved me to run for this race. In the 80s, we peaked at 85 percent of senators and congressmen were combat veterans. Now we're at a record low of 15.
Mm -hmm. And makes I think that difference. makes a big difference. And we just lost another one in John McCain. And I think that commonality of service is really what we're missing. And that's what my, uh, that's what my campaign's all about. And that's what's fired people up to come out to the polls. Well, we thank you for your service and many, many combat tour um, tours of duty for you. And we will watch this race with you and your opponent. Um, she sounds like she's really a, a, a centrist, or at least um, her talking points are very much uh, like, you know, what we've heard from you tonight. So we'll they see. They may be, as but as a junior member in a Nancy Pelosi-led Congress, we know what direction they're going to go, and that's the choice in front of us. We'll check in with you again. All right. Mike, thanks. Thanks, Shannon.